Welcome back, friends. We are uh, working on this G372 from Hulse Pharma Farmer Tech. So I got the case halves assembled over the crank. I put the piston in. I 3D printed an adapter for the timing wheel. You can see it down in there. Uh, I'll include a link down in the description for the 3D print files so if you want to print your own that should have good instructions on how to do it. Uh, I also have done a little bit of work on the cylinder. You can see I've cut this out, kind of cleaned things up. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of adjusting to the timings. I did lower the intake floor just a touch, cleaned up the transfer ports so they all open at the same time. They were horrible. Some of them were high, some of them were low. Uh, I did open up the exhaust outlet to match the same hole size as the plate that goes back in there. So hopefully that'll be nice and smooth and I just barely touched the opening here to match the opening in the intake boot so I didn't uh, change the timings too much so I'll so basically the exhaust opens at 97 degrees after top dead center uh, the intake opens at 75 degrees and the transfers are at 125 or so. I tried to push them down just a little bit, so it was probably closer to 123. 122 is kind of a good place to be, but I didn't want to get too aggressive with the porting. The cranks in these are supposedly pretty soft and will stretch easily. But it's definitely not pretty down in there, but being my first time doing anything like this. Matter of fact, I had to buy a Dremel tool or rotary tool to even do it. So I'm pretty impressed with it so far. Here's a, some pictures showing some of the modifications I did kind of before and after. Uh, I didn't video or record the actual process of porting and there's plenty of videos out there to show how to do it properly not the way I did it because I, honestly I don't know what I'm doing yet I also uh, put a link in the description kind of showing how to set up your degree wheel and you know, some techniques for porting and there's definitely better videos out there than what I can produce so check the description and I'll have all that information down there. I'll put a link in the description for a couple different videos on a couple different ways to put the cases together. Uh, some use threaded rod and washers and pull the cranks into the case. I use the uh, heat gun method where just put the crank in a Ziploc bag into some ice water to cool it and then use a heat gun to heat the case and the bearings up and just fell right together so it worked pretty good uh, I'll leave a link in the description to Tin Man's video showing how to heat it cool it and just slide it together I've seen a lot of people recommend cutting a little bit of the tang off from the circlip that holds the piston in uh, you can see here about what I did, just cutting off quite a little bit. Apparently there's a weight issue with too much tang on there. Caused the circuit clip to come loose and the engine ingests it and bad things happen. I've got the sealing surface of the case cleaned with acetone. I cleaned the mating surface on the cylinder. And I added a little uh, Loctite 518 to help seal it up because I'm not using the base gasket. I have about 
28 thousandths of crush without the base gasket, so I figured I would use that. So now I've got everything cleaned up with brake clean. I've got my wrist pin bearing greased up nicely. Make sure the arrow goes towards the exhaust. Now comes the fun part, putting in the circlips. I showed earlier that I had modified them a little bit. We'll see how well this works. Never done this before, so we're going to find out together. some of this grease out of the way so I can see what's actually going on here. It looks like it's down in the groove properly. I don't know if you'll be able to see but it looks like it's seated down in there nicely. So let's try the other side. Push the wrist pin down in tight against the other circlip. seated in there all the way. Doesn't look like there's any part sticking out of the groove, so I think we're okay. Now our rings. ring gap's really tight on these when I was checking the uh, using it as a gauge to check when the transfer is open I could see it was quite a tight I guess. Let me pull it back around. I've got it on the wrong way because there's a pin in that lower groove Make sure there's a pin in both grooves. There we go. If you look right there, there is a pin down in there. Once that's squished down, it'll hit. And there's another pin in the upper groove right there. And that would do the same thing. Let me go over here. So we'll just start the ring in the groove and work our way around gently. The rings are extremely hard, which makes them brittle. So it's not really hard to break them. Well, there's our rings. So rings are installed, circlips are installed. You really don't want to make a mistake and forget the circlips. They have it to end badly. So now we've got our four cylinder bolts. Okay, 
if you look carefully at the rings, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but they are beveled on the ends so that when they come together, they go around that doll pin that's down in that ring groove. I don't know if that will show up on camera or not. So I think that was my issue. You gotta make sure that bevel is up so the ring can go underneath that alignment pin in order to compress completely. So we'll try this a third time with hopefully the rings in the right orientation. It's funny, I watched dozens of videos on putting these saws together and I don't think any of them mention that. If they did, apparently I wasn't paying very good attention. Okay. So now, put our spring compressor back on there again. That looks a little better. I don't think I'm lined up on the pins properly. Not. Again, making sure we've got the exhaust port going the right, going the right direction. Oh, that went down a little farther. did put Loctite down in the holes for the cylinder bolts. And if I can get my chubby little fingers to work like they're supposed to. Oh, are you kidding me? We're going to do it this way. going around and just snugging them down just a little bit not going overly tight work my way around and snug them down a little bit more each time I don't know if there's a particular pattern you're supposed to use for these like a cylinder head on an engine I'll give them a good crank Crank them down until the vein pops in the neck and call it good. Ah, that might be tight enough. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. And then we'll find out. I think those rings are so hard, I don't think that cylinder, I should have honed it, but I don't have a cylinder hone. We'll put a little more two-stroke down in there, give it some more lube. 
Maybe the rings just need to seat. Or I guess we're going to find out. Okay, so now we'll put the fuel tank on. Let's see how well this goes. screws My theory is that just about every bolt or fastener or threaded feature should either get Loctite or anti-seize. These bolts don't seem to want to fit very well. stainless bolts I bought out of a kit because the two bolts they sent for these anti-vibe mounts are way too short. So either I have the wrong bolts or they sent the wrong bolts. I plan on having a parts list put together kind of showing what bolts came in the kit where they go Just a kind of limiter for the side of the gas tank. Doesn't appear there's any sort of bushing or anything that goes in there. I assume it's just so if one of the springs breaks on one of the anti vibe mounts that the whole saw just doesn't fall apart. Hopefully that'll tighten up once we get the handle on there. And I think before we put the card plate on, we'll get the flywheel and coil put on. So we'll need our key for the flywheel. Sure, it matters which way this key goes in. I'm 
looks to go that way. There is a lock washer that goes underneath that bolt. I know some people put a flat washer under there as well. I don't know if it's really necessary. Take our 13 millimeter socket. I'm sure there's a torque spec for this. I'm just going to torque it as tight as I can by hand. Let me get a piston. That'll be torqued enough. There's that. Hopefully that's got the wires for the kill switch as well in here. It does appear that there is a couple of wires. I'm gonna find a business card. I believe the Husqvarna spec is 10 thousandths. of these long bolts and don't forget the lock tight Put our business card in here. Spin it around until the magnet comes up. Give these a little bit of a torque down. Like that's tight enough. Too much gap in there. So I'll hold it while we torque it. Yeah, you can see it moving as I torque it down. We'll measure the gap and see what it is when we're done. That might be way too wide. I suppose we'll try it. Yeah, that's going to be way too wide. We're going to have to do something to fix that. Let me see what I can come up with. So now we'll put the little air deflector nozzle on. There's a little tab sticks out here. It goes in this hole down in here.
if this wants to stay in that hole. I'm not sure it was manufactured correctly. Tough to get started. Hitting, it looks like it's in the hole. If I'm not mistaken, I think you can leave this out. There's some debate on whether or not it's necessary or fully functional the way it's intended. Now we should be able to put this on. needs to get stuffed up through and this can get stuck in there I think we're getting pretty long in our video now. I'm going to pause it here and we'll start fresh with a new video. Thanks for watching.